Greg Allman was the vocalist, songwriter, and keyboard player for the Allman Brothers Band. His life was a long and rocky road. When he was two years old, his father was murdered on the day after Christmas. Him and his older brother Dwayne were sent off to military school while their mother worked and went back to school herself studying to become a CPA. He became very close to his older brother Dwayne, but when Greg was 23, his older brother was killed in a motorcycle accident. If there was really one person Greg looked up to, it was his brother, and now he was gone. The last time they spoke, they argued when Dwayne accused Greg of dipping into his stash of cocaine. Greg lied and denied it. Later on, Greg would say, I have thought of that lie every day of my life. I told him that lie, and then he told me that he was sorry and that he loved me. Greg Allman was born December 8, 1947. Growing up was a hard road to hoe for Greg, as was his life later on. When his mother Geraldine, known to everyone as Jerry, sent him and his brother Dwayne off to military school, he always felt it was to get him out of the way. Now after he grew up, he realized it was her only choice, as she had to have time to work and go back to school to get herself a career to where she could make a decent life for herself and her two boys. At that time, the little boy couldn't understand that. Greg admits he grew up resenting his mom for this. In 1957, after finishing her schooling, Jerry Allman moved herself and her two boys to Daytona Beach, Florida, and both him and his brother Dwayne could not have been happier. The family rented a few places there and then moved into a new home on 100 Van Avenue, right off of Highway A1A in Daytona Shores, and this was in 1959. The next year, Greg bought his first guitar, now, Dwayne got himself a motorcycle for his birthday, but spent a lot of time borrowing Greg's guitar. And when the old motorcycle fell apart, Dwayne sold it for parts and bought himself a guitar. Now, both of the Almond Boys had one. It seemed Greg and Dwayne were both starting to get in a little trouble around Daytona at that time, and their mother thought it would be a good idea for the boys to head back to Castle Heights Military School once again. They both played in their first band up there, it was called the Misfits. Then Dwayne was either kicked out, or in Greg's words, Dwayne just quit the academy and went back home to Daytona. In the spring of 1964, Greg left too, returning home. It was around this time the brothers started a band called the Escorts. They opened a show up for the Beach Boys in the spring of 1965, and later on that year, they changed the name of the band to the Almond Joys. The Almond Joys primarily played a mix of rhythm and blues, soul, and rock covers. The band gained some regional recognition, especially for their live performances. The repertoire included songs by artists such as James Brown, Wilson Pickett, and Otis Redding. After the Almond Joys disbanded, Greg and Dwayne went on to form various other groups, including the Hourglass, before ultimately co-founding the Almond Brothers Band. While the Almond Joys and Hourglass might not have reached the height of fame that the Almond Brothers Band later achieved, their role in the musical journey of Greg and his brother Dwayne is significant. It was a stepping stone that contributed to the development of their musical identities and set the stage for the success that would follow later. Around this time, the Vietnam War was raging and everyone feared the draft. And at 18, Greg was no different. After getting his notice, Greg needed to find a way to get out of it so they could keep on playing and Big Brother Dwayne was there to lend a hand. Dwayne, who was exempt because of their father who was a second lieutenant in the United States Army, was dead. And Dwayne, being the oldest son, was considered exempt from the draft. Now Greg tells the story differently and that Dwayne just walked out and they forgot about him but I just can't believe that one. Anyhow, Dwayne had cooked up a scheme to get his younger brother out of the draft. He had to have Greg shoot himself in the foot in order to get a medical pass. And being the guys that they were, Dwayne and Greg decided to make this into a party. At the party, Greg got cold feet, or maybe a cold foot. Dwayne said to him that he invited these girls over to see a foot shooting, and now you're gonna let them down? 
Greg had drawn a target on his moccasin, placing it carefully between two of the bones in his foot so as to cause minimal damage. After more coaxing by Duane, Greg slammed down two more shots of whiskey, made a quick phone call, and came back outside with a small handgun. In the distance, a siren wailed. Greg pointed the gun at the target on his moccasin and shot. Now give credit to Greg, because in a remarkable act of good judgment, he had called the ambulance before he pulled the trigger. The next day, he hobbled into the Army recruitment office and got his medical exemption. The Hourglass ended up in California and recorded a few albums. And if you listen close into and between the production of these songs, you can hear the promise in Greg's vocals and Dwayne's guitar. What was to become the Allman Brothers Band was there, but Dwayne knew this wasn't the sound they were looking for, so he left and started doing studio work back in Muscle Shoals. Greg stayed behind in California. When Dwayne got tired or bored with the session work, he went to Jacksonville, Florida, and stopped by his old friend's house, drummer Butch Trucks, and said he was ready to put a band together. And that's what he did. This was where J-Mo, Barry Oakley, Dickie Betts, Butch, and Dwayne would start the Allman Brothers Band. All they needed was a singer, and Dwayne said there was only one singer for this group, and that was his little brother Greg. Dwayne called Greg, who was out in California, and told him he had the band. All they needed was him. So Greg caught a ride across country, and once there, the Allman Brothers Band was complete. Besides his vocal and organ playing, Greg's songwriting was an important part to the start of the band. The style of songwriting Greg felt was a unique blend from all of the black blues and soul musicians, in particular Muddy Waters, Ray Charles, and James Brown. Greg's lyrics were always known for their depth of emotion and authenticity. As a songwriter, Greg wrote several of the Allman Brothers hits, including Whipping Post, Melissa, and Midnight Rider, which he dubbed Song I'm Most Proud Of In My Career. But he could be very slow when writing, only working on songs when inspiration struck. Many times in life, Greg would have trouble expressing what was inside of him. Life on the road with the Allman Brothers wasn't always easy. Drinking since he was a teen, Greg said drugs came as second nature, and by 19 he was snorting heroin and cocaine. After the death of his brother Dwayne, life would drastically change for Greg. He said he didn't start grieving Dwayne's death until 10 years after he was gone. He said that you can't cry while you're on cocaine, and that helped him get through the funeral. To try and get a grasp on Greg and his personal life, between 1971 and 1981, he was married four times. He would go on to marry three more times after that. He would father five children, three with various wives, and two with other women he had relationships with. Greg kind of put it all in perspective by saying, every woman I've ever had a relationship with has loved me for who they thought I was. This makes me wonder if anyone ever really knew Greg. His third wife, Cher, who attended his funeral, had this to say about Greg. A kind, loving man and a mystery to all of us at times. After his brother Dwayne's death, and then a year later the death of bassist Barry Oakley, Greg tried to keep the band going. But by 1976, the band was to break up for a time Many believe that the drugs and alcohol and power struggles between Greg and guitarist Dickie Betts was the cause, and really, it's anybody's guess. Greg would go and record solo albums and start his own band and do some touring. It kept his name out there. But as the 80s rolled in and the southern country rock started slowing down in the mainstream music, Greg would stick to his roots in the blues. I think he felt safe there because that's what was in his heart. Greg, like most addicts, would try and get off drugs, and then his alcohol consumption would escalate. Greg says his normal was to drink a quart of vodka a day. His low point came January 12, 1995, the night the Allman Brothers Band was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, I remember watching it that night and seeing Greg look like death warmed over and hardly able to talk. I figured it was about over for him. 
Willie Nelson, who inducted them, asked him before walking out there if he was all right, and he said, Willie, I'm not all right. His acceptance speech lasted all of 20 seconds. Thank you, folks. In honor of the greatest friend, brother, guitar player, and inspiration I've ever known, my brother Dwayne was always the first to face the fire. He was my greatest motivation. Thank you. Greg had so much he wanted to say that night, but that was all he was able to get out. This is how Greg described it in his book. It should have been the greatest week of my life, but instead I hit an all-time low. The Allman Brothers Band, the band my brother started, the band with our name on it, was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I flat out missed it. I was physically there, but otherwise I was out of it, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I was drunk, man, just shit-faced drunk the entire time. Welcome to the story of my life. After watching the video of it a few days later, Greg said he was appalled at himself. He said he broke down and cried like a baby and prayed. He had been to rehab 14 times. This time he says he hired a male nurse to come in who had worked at rehab and knew all about it and just bit the bullet until the stuff was out of his system. Cleaned up and feeling better, Greg would get the Allman Brothers band back together There'd be some member changes off and on, but they were still a huge draw at live performances. Greg would write and they would record some more albums, but as time moved on, Greg's health was deteriorating. Those hard years of drinking and drugging took its toll on him. He had had hepatitis C for many years, but now it was getting worse with cirrhosis and soon cancer of the liver. He was to receive a liver transplant in 2010 and he would recover but the cancer would return a few years later. Greg would pass away at his home in Richmond Hills, Georgia on May 27, 2017. He was 69 years old. Greg Allman had one of those voices that could deliver a song to your heart. Nothing fancy. He didn't have great range or power. He just made you feel it. Some of the lyrics he wrote were so heartfelt he had a lot of trouble trying to express himself in life and sometime even in his songwriting. I'm sure he probably left us with a lot more to give had he figured out how. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear more about the Allman Brothers Band, here's a few more that might interest you. The comments section is open for you all to tell us your Greg Allman stories and favorite songs and performances. And a big thank you to Christopher Lee Helton Photography for some of the photos used in this video. There'll be a link to him in the description. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it.